Righto, starting, we're going to be creating a new TD project, making sure to use Uni Editor version 2021.3 at least. Once the editor is open, we're going to create a new folder called Resources, within which we're going to import the asset pack that you can find down below in the description. Once imported, we're going to go into the Environment folder, selecting the tile set, we're going to set the pixels per unit to 48, sprite mode to multiple, filter mode to points, and our compression to none before clicking Apply. Now heading into Sprite Editor, we're going to click Slice, leave it on Automatic and just simply press Slice. Upon which in the bottom left sprite, we're going to modify it so the width is 48 while the height is 38 before clicking Apply. Now renaming our sample scene to Demo from the Scenes folder, we're going to create a new game object called Platform before dragging into the Resources folder to create a prefab. From here we're going to create two child game objects called Top and Bottom before heading into the Tile Set sprite sheet within our Environment folder and dragging tile set 23 into our top game object. Now we're going to add a box collider 2D, slightly editing it so it's just below the top of the sprite. This allows us to have the effect of the player walking on the platform instead of on top of it, making sure to select the used by composite boolean to true. I'll show you why in a moment. Duplicate the tile four more times while incrementing their X position by one. Once done, we're going to drag tile set 21 into bottom setting its Y axis to negative 1.1 and its scale to 2. Once again, just like before, incrementing its X axis by 1 for every duplicate. Now heading back into the platform game object, we're going to add a new component, which will be Composite Collider 2D, setting its body type to kinematic, freezing its Z rotation and Y position. Lastly, we're going to set its Composite Collider 2D geometry type to polygons. This is a deal with any future issues we might have. Now we're going to select the untag tag just below the platform name in the inspector, clicking add tag. We're going to create a new tag pressing the plus icon called platform with a capital P before setting platforms tag to our newly created platform tag. Now we're going to select the platform in the hierarchy and duplicate it three more times, setting the first duplicates transform position X value to negative six, the second to six and the third to 12. We're going to set the camera's size to 2.5, its background color to black, and just arrange it how you would like it. Once you're happy with it's set up, we can now start on creating the background. So right clicking in the hierarchy, we're going to head over to UI and just left click canvas within which we're going to set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size, its X value to 1920 and Y value to 1080, before setting the render mode of the canvas to screen space camera and setting the render camera to our main camera within the scene. Now, create a new child game object for the canvas, naming it background, set its anchor using alt to stretch, which is the bottom right one, before giving the background game object its own child image object once again, heading to UI and selecting Image, we're going to repeat the process of setting its anchor to stretch using Alt before duplicating it two times, naming the first Sky, the second Clouds, and the third Sea. We're going to set the source image within the image components of each image object to what they represent, the first being Sky, of course, second being Clouds, and third Sea. Now we can just reposition it slightly. I set the Sea's top position to 555, the cloud's top position to 52, which gives us a pleasant looking background. Now we're going to create a new folder in assets called scripts, within which we create a new C sharp script called platform controller, as we of course need a script that can control our platform's movement. Within the platform controller script, I'm going to remove the both system imports, as well as the start method, replacing it for private float called speed with a default value of five, making sure they give it the serialized build attribute as well as a private rigid body 2D with a variable name RB2D. Once again, making sure to give it a serialized build attribute. As we want the platform to always move left, we're going to make sure that the update method is constantly setting the rigid body 2D's velocity to new vector two, passing in negative one times our speed variable and zero. Heading back into the editor and opening the platform prefab, we're going to add the platform controller script making sure to set the rigid body 2D reference to the platform. Testing it out, everything seems to work fine, except we run out of platform, which is a bit of an issue. So heading back to our scripts folder, 
we're going to create a new script called platform pool where once again we remove both system imports and add in a private game object which is our platform prefab making sure that add the serialized build attribute a private float called current x spawn position giving it a default of 12 for adding using unity engine dot pool this gives us access to object pooling which helps optimize our projects and lower the burden placed on the cpu so adding public i object pool with the type being game object giving the pool the name m underscore pool as well as a get and set also following the documentation we're going to add both a private bool called collection checks giving a default of true and a private int called max pool size with a default of 15. removing the update method we're going to initialize mpool within the start method using mpool equals new object pool giving it the type game object adding the method create platform a private method that returns a game object by creating a game object called platform and setting it to instantiate platform prefab the parent transform being this script's game object we then disable the platform using platform.setActive passing in false before returning platform our next method is on take from pool a method that's called when a platform is taken from the pool using get something i'll show a bit later the method itself takes in a game object of platform where it sets the platform's transform position to equal new vector 3 passing our current x spawn position with y and z being zeros we then enable the platform's game object by using platform.gameObject.setActive true. Next, we have on return to pool, a rather simple method that takes in the platform game object and uses an arrow function to disable the platform game object using platform.gameObject.setActive false. Of course, just like on take from pool, it's only used when a release is called. Finally, our last method is on destroy pool object, which, as you can imagine, when called, destroys the platform. It's a pretty handy method considering it allows us more control over what the destroy behavior does. But in this case, it just destroys the platform. Finally, we add in our collection checks. We set the capacity of the pool to 10 before adding our max pool size. With that done, save and head back to the editor before selecting all four platforms, right clicking and selecting create empty parent. We're gonna name this new parent to platform holder, giving it our platform pool script as a component and dragging our platform prefab into its reference. Now we're going to create a new game object in the hierarchy called platform releaser, resetting its transform and setting its X position to negative 12. As for these platforms, it's the sweet spot. Give it a component of box collider 2D and edit its collider so its height is increased to just below the bottom of the platform before finally setting the is trigger boolean to true. Now heading back into the scripts folder, we're going to create a new script called platform releaser, dragging it onto the platform releaser game object, right clicking it and selecting edit script. Once again, removing both system imports, we're going to add a new private variable platform pool called platform pool, giving it a serialized field attribute, removing both the start and update methods and adding a private void on trigger enter 2D, which takes in a collider 2D collision with its parameters and giving it an if statement with its condition being collision dot compare tag platform but there's not much we can do without anything to call so heading back into our platform pool script we're going to create two new public void methods with the first being spawn platform which uses an arrow function a pool variables dot get method and second being a release platform which takes in a game object of platform and once again using an arrow function before using our pool variables dot release method passing in the platform. If you want to know more about the get and release methods, feel free to browse the documentation link down below. Going back to the platform release script, we add our two new methods before heading back to the editor. Set the platform pool reference to platform holder within our platform release game object and test it out. And it works perfectly. A slight hiccup, that's okay, we can fix that. Just going to set the, the first platform to zero. The second platform to negative six. The third platform to six. And the last one to 12. Testing again, and we have no gaps. Excellent. With our platforms working, we're going to head back into our resources folder, into our asset pack, this time going into the player sprites. Selecting both idle and run using shift. We're going to set the pixels per unit to 48. 
the sprite mode to multiple, filter mode to point, and compression to none before clicking apply. Now just selecting idle, we're going to click sprite editor, slice, we're going to set the grid by cell size to 48 by 48, click slice and apply, doing the same to the other. Now within the assets folder, we're going to create a new folder called animations. Before in the hierarchy, we're going to create a new square game object. We're going to 2D object sprites and clicking square. Rename the game object to player and position the player where would you like it to be. Once positioned, we're going to set the sprite image to idle zero before giving our player game object a new sorting layer by clicking default, add sorting layer, clicking the plus icon and naming the new layer player. Making sure to set the sorting layer on the player game object to player. A little bit of repositioning and making sure player selected, we're going to click window animation, animation, before clicking create. We're going to name our new file idle, making sure it's within the animations folder and clicking save. Now left click idle zero within the player sprites folder and shift clicked idle three. This allows you to drag every single sprite into the animation window. Doing the same for run, we're gonna left click the idle dropdown within the animation window select create new clip and do the same thing but for the run sprite sheet. With that done, we're going to head into the animator once again making sure to select player We're going to right click idle, select make transition and click run Heading into our parameters We're going to create a new ball called is running setting the transition condition by pressing the plus icon, which should give you the condition set the true. Just make sure the disable has exit time as we don't need it. Make sure is running is set to true and we can test out the game. It's that simple. Let me know if you have any thoughts on the tutorial, um, if I should continue the series, like the video if you learned something and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. See you in the next one.